Speaking of winter, before we get into winter conditioning, I know that uh, all across the state of Texas, people have dealt with some adverse weather over the last week. It's been really cold, right? People have lost power. Some people still don't have power. Uh, people have lost food, had to throw food away. Uh, people have dealt with damage to their houses, to their trees. Uh, I know there's been some polyps on the road. People have lost their lives, unfortunately. I see people have lost pets. I saw somebody on Twitter uh, that lost some fish. Hopefully no other pets have been lost. Um, but it's just been really bad. I know we're not used to this weather as Texans and definitely not used to the side effects that have been coming with this weather lately in the last few years in the state of Texas. But I'm hoping that everybody's situation improves, uh, whatever it is at this point and you hearing this podcast. And I hope everybody gets warmer and hope we can get back to living that great state of Texas life that we're accustomed to. So, uh, yeah, hoping everything is better from the adverse uh, weather effects that we had over the last week. I couldn't even work three days last week because of the weather and everything going on in Austin. Can't say I'm complaining, <laughs> but I was affected by it too, even with me living down here in Houston. So when you talk about winter conditioning, to me, championships are built in the off season. And if this Texas football team wants to play at a championship level in 2023, it starts right now, right? Whether that be a national championship or a big 12 championship, right? If this team is going to play at that level in 2023, it starts right now. And I know we have a long way to the season, seven months, right? You have winter conditioning right now, spring ball, summer workouts, and then fall camp, but it starts right now, right? And this is a very important off season for the Texas Longhorns because this is a very important season, right? We've all deemed 2023 as the year, right? We said Sark needed time to get his players in, get his staff acclimated and put his imprint on this Texas football team. I think he's done that specifically with the recruiting, right? We said that it took time for him to, you know, kind of overcome what happened in the last era, right? Get rid of some of that dysfunction, get some of the players that didn't want to be here, right? Really put your imprint on the team. I think he's done that. And so 2023 has to be the year for me, at least this is my opinion that it's big 12 championship game or bust. I think if you can't get to the big 12 championship game in year three with the amount of talent on this roster in the big 12, then we should have some questions. I'm not saying he should be fired, but we should have some questions, legitimate questions about if Steve Sarkeesian is the guy and can he win at the highest level with the Texas Longhorns. But anyways, before we get into all of that and the narratives, all of that starts right now with winter condition. And so 24 seven sports put out a story on the second, highlighting some players that have shown some really good things in winter conditioning thus far. And it's a really welcome sight to see because a lot of these players are expected to have a big role for this Texas football team in the 2023 season. And it starts with the wide receiver room, right? They mentioned a few wide receivers, but really the wide receiver room as a whole is looking a lot better. And this is really good one because they just dealt with some turnover going from Brendan Marion to Chris Jackson just a few weeks ago at the wide receiver coach position. But two, I think this is a really welcome sight because the last two years with Sark coming in and being the offensive guru, we haven't gotten great production from the wide receiver room. Really, in the first year, Xavier Worthy came out of nowhere, but it was Xavier Worthy or bust, especially after Jordan Whittington went down and some other receivers didn't work out. I think Bijan Robinson was your second leading receiver in terms of catches in 2021. Not great, right? 2022, the wide receiver room looks really good on paper coming into the season. We said, oh, we got a Jai Hall, Brennan Thompson, Savion Red, Isaiah Nayor. And right, whether it was injuries, coaches not trusting the receivers, not feeling like they were good enough to play yet or uh, off the field concerns, whatever it was. Right. The wide receiver room was very underwhelming in 2022 based on expectations that we had. Right. Even Xavier Worthy took a step back. And then we saw really good seasons from JT Sanders. I know he's a tight end and Jordan Whittington when they were used consistently and effectively. The problem is on a week to week basis, they weren't used consistently and effectively. So this article talks about how in Steve Sarkeesian's time in Alabama, he had multiple receivers that could affect defenses all over the field, right? Specifically down the field. When you're talking about Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith, right? And Texas hasn't had that the last two years. So defenses have been able to, to kind of play closer to the line of scrimmage, right? And take away all that underneath stuff, especially take that stuff away from uh, a young quarterback who ha at times hasn't always understood what he was seeing. But if you could take Xavier Worthy away, you're really taking away half of Steve Sarkeesian's offense because we know this is an offense that loves to create mismatches down the field and loves to go deep. Well, we haven't really had the personnel to do that outside of Xavier Worthy the last two years. And that's why a lot of times we saw Quinn Ewers kind of force the ball to Xavier Worthy. 
heading into the 2023 season, that problem should, asterisk by that, should be alleviated because now you brought in A.D. Mitchell, who we've seen in the biggest games and national championship games, can get deep, has the speed and the strength to win those one-on-one matchups against DBs. But he also is very nuanced and has some great footwork off the line and creates separation with his release off the line and can make plays all over the field, not just deep. Isaiah Nayor, who probably won't be cleared for full football activity until August, but he's getting back to running. They're saying he looks really good. Average almost 20 yards of reception his last year at Wyoming. He's a big play receiver, and if he's a part of this offense this year, which he will be when he gets healthy, not sure how much, he'll be a big play receiver for the Longhorns, right? That'll take pressure off of Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell. They also mentioned Jonte Cook specifically, right? We know how great of a route runner he is already coming from that coach, you know, Hooks tree, I guess, or being coached uh, by Coach Hooks. But he just has exceptional agility, right, exceptional quickness, knows how to set up defenders, knows how to run routes, and has the speed to get downfield as well. So in the last two years, for whatever reason, you didn't trust your wide receiver room or you didn't have the personnel in your wide receiver room to attack defenses down the field outside of Xavier Worthy. Now this article mentions you have five to six players that should be able to do that on a regular basis, right? We've seen it from Xavier Worthy. We've seen it from A.D. Mitchell. We've seen it from Isaiah Nayor. Hopefully it's the same coming off an ACL injury. John T. Cook, they're expecting that out of him. Ryan Niblett with 10-3, 10-4 speed, they're expecting that out of him. And then Brennan Thompson, who's even faster than that, they wanted him to get some beef and, and bulk up a little bit. And he's shown that coming into winter conditioning. So you have players that can make plays all over the field at the wide receiver position, specifically deep. That forces those safeties to play a little bit deeper, which is going to open up opportunities for all your deep receivers. Right. Take pressure off Xavier Worthy. Open up things for JT Sanders and Jordan Whittington underneath whoever your slot receiver is going to be. And then it's going to open up opportunities for Cedric Baxter, Jonathan Brooks and Jaden Blue coming out of the backfield as pass catchers, but in that power run game for Steve Sarkeesian. So I love what I'm hearing from the wide receiver room under new wide receiver coach, Chris Jackson. Jonathan Brooks and Jaden Blue are both dealing with injuries. Jonathan Brooks is dealing with a hernia injury. He had surgery after the Alamo Bowl. Jaden Blue is dealing with a shoulder injury. So Cedric Baxter, who was already the number one running back in the country coming into this 2023 class, who was already expected to have a big role this year has been thrown into the fire. He's number one running back in the country. And now he's running back one at the university of Texas right now. And they say they just love his work ethic. He's a sponge. He has great football IQ and he wants to come in and work. He wants to come in and be great. I mentioned that in two, three weeks of being here, he had already went from 208 to 213 pounds and he's coming into the season expecting to shoulder the load. You know, I think starting week one, Jonathan Brooks will probably be your running back one just with him being in the system for two years. But I wouldn't be surprised if by the middle of the season, if not earlier, Cedric Baxter, especially with what he's shown already with that big physical frame and his perfect scheme fit for this power run inside zone offense. I wouldn't be surprised if by the middle of the season, especially with his status as the number one running back, that Cedric Baxter is running back one at the University of Texas. And like I said last week when I did my Cedric Baxter B. John Robinson piece, I fully expect Cedric Baxter to add his name to that legacy of great running backs at the University of Texas. Justice Finkley, who kind of got overshadowed as a true freshman last year from what he was able to do by Kelvin Banks, right? When you bring somebody in like Kelvin Banks, who's already from day one, one of the best linemen in the country as a true freshman, he's going to get the majority of that talk. But when you look at the true freshman 2022 class, there were only three players that really had consistent roles week in and week out. Kelvin Banks, Cole Hudson, and Justice Finkley. And I thought Justice Finkley was really good last year in a rotational role, right? As a run stuffer, somebody that just has a relentless motor, right? Is going to always, you know, push himself to get to the quarterback or get to the ball carrier. And then we saw in the Oklahoma game, right? His ability to get to the quarterback as well. I think he had one sack on the season, maybe in that Oklahoma game. Right now, they're expecting Baron Sorrell, who we saw a lot of improvement and development from last year to start at that Jack position. And so Justice Finkley is the leading candidate to start at that Buck position, right? He's gotten bigger, right? He's even bigger than he can, right? He gained some more muscle to that frame. And like I said, he just has a relentless motor, right? Something that you want to see coming off of that edge. And like I said, I thought he was really good last year. That's a reason that as a true freshman, he played in almost every game, if not every game. And so I think in a full-time role this year, we're going to see even more of that. And I think for people that have concerns about his pass rushing ability, we're going to see what he's able to do in a full-time role this year. If the staff trusts him there, then I trust him there. So I'm expecting a big role from Justice Finkley and, 
I'm forever biased. His mom was on the show just as Finkley was on the show. So, hell yeah, I'm rooting for the Finkleys. And I'm rooting for the Longhorns, right? And then Jalen Catalan, right? We've seen at the University of Arkansas, all SEC safety, has All-American safety potential anytime he's on the field. The only question mark about Catalan is his health. Only reason he was in the portal is his health. If it wasn't for that, he would be in the National Football League right now. Right? He's a really good player. And I mentioned how the safety play at the University of Texas was really good last year with Jaron Thompson and Anthony Cook the best it had been in years. And it has the ability to be even better this year when you bring in a player like Jalen Catalan and then another year for a player who was really good last year, probably underrated at times, Jaron Thompson. And then with the depth you have behind them and Mo Blackwell, Michael Taff, BJ Allen, Larry Turner Gooden, and then hopefully Warren Robertson, he's set to announce tomorrow after this whole winter storm fiasco. I'm expecting big things from that safety room in 2023, but the biggest things I'm expecting are going to come from Jalen Catalan and hopefully – I think he can be a Big 12, all Big 12 safety if he stays healthy. So winter can be really good. Thus far, we're seeing some really good things from this Texas football team. And like I said, championships are built in the offseason. This is going to be a Big 12 championship level team. It starts right now with winter conditioning for Steve Sarkeesian and this Longhorn football team. A quick word from LinkedIn and Built Bar. And then we're going to talk about Rodney Terry and this Texas men's basketball team. I love me some Rodney Terry, man. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and the calories, then you have to try a built bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. If you're like me, where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then man, I've got just the thing for you. You've got to try built. With built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes built bars so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. And they come in amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it. But even though these bars taste like a candy bar, they still maintain amazing macros. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. But get this. This is the best part yet. Now, you don't have to wait around for a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at built.com but now you can get them at your local walmart or sam's club so what are you waiting for head to built.com walmart or sam's club right now to get your built bars today right now like right now so i love rodney terry <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say it i love rodney terry and i love what he's done for this texas men's basketball team and we're at the point now where we're judging Rodney Terry on a game by game basis. Right. And we're saying he has to do this to keep his job. He has to do this to keep his job, whatever. Right. <laughs> as Jason Jordan said, as I'm going to continue to say, as I'm trying to coin it, I want them to put this on some shirts at this point and come out the tunnel with it. Rodney Terry is killing the interview. Right. I know that this is a season long interview process for him. And every time he loses is we got to go get Jay Riot or John Calipari. Rodney Terry right now, is killing the interview and he's exceeded expectations exceeded expectations as the texas men's basketball coach thus far 15 games into his tenure after being thrown into the fire finding out on december 12th that you are the coach of this texas men's basketball team you have to rally this team around you you have to pick this team up amid, amongst uncertainty and a dark cloud hanging over this program and oh by the way ronnie terry you have a game tonight go win it right 12 and three since he took over three double digit comebacks in big 12 conference play since he took over number one in the big 12 conference, undoubtedly the toughest conference in basketball since he took over alone at the top. Rodney Terry is killing the interview. And I've heard some people say, well, they shouldn't be down in the first half. They can't play like that. They can't continue to play like that. They're getting away with it. Respectfully, who cares? Like, it's a 40-minute basketball game. You know, I know that we want to react after every play and after every timeout. It's a – after every shot, it's a 40-minute basketball game. To me, like, I don't care who's down or who's winning after 20 minutes. 
if Rodney Terry and his team are victorious after 40 minutes, right? So, like, we got to stop acting like that's a knock on Rodney Terry that they're down at halftime. It would be if they lost the game. <laughs> like, But if Rodney Terry comes back and wins the game, why does it matter what the halftime score was? That's neither here nor there. When you look at this game on Saturday between Texas and Kansas State, what I love is not only is this Texas basketball team Texas basketball team showing grit. Not only are they showing toughness, not only are they showing resilience, they're showing it in the most important moments. When you look down the stretch of this basketball game, right, as well as Texas played to come back, and it looked like they had kind of, you know, a hold on this game, right, even though Kansas State was making some shots. When Texas had that, like, five-point lead, you were like, oh, okay, Kansas State's not going to come back. Kansas State took the lead with about 30 seconds left. After everything Texas did, so you're like, they're at home, top 10 team. Wow, they might sneak out of here with a win after Texas outplayed there for the whole second half. And that composure we continue to see from a veteran team showed up again. They went right to Christian Bishop in their offensive set, got him to play, and he made a great play to score. Then they come down to court when they know they need a stop. You can't even give up one point, right, to this Kansas State basketball team that has – playmakers all over on the court they forced them to turn the ball over twice Timmy Allen gets the first turnover he turns it over and then Christian Bishop who's the player of the game comes and knocks that out of Noel's hands they get the ball to Serge Barry Rice he makes the two free throws and they go up three for good in the most important moments on the offensive and defensive ends and at the free throw line they made their biggest plays. And to me, this was the game thus far that showed the most of what Rodney Terry is doing for this basketball team. Because like I said, you have to give him credit for the way that the team has rallied around him. And I think that's obvious. But from an X's and O's standpoint, I hear so much of Chris Beard built this team. Anybody can win with this team group of seniors. You know, this, this group of seniors in the Big 12. Like, But we also acknowledge it's the toughest conference. But now it's just easy to win in the Big 12, right? Like, what is Rodney Terry doing? Anybody can win with this team. On a team with Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen, and Serge Ibari Rice and Tyrese Hunter on it, they ran their offense almost exclusively through Christian Bishop in the second half. That's Rodney Terry. Dylan DeSue played 11 minutes. Your starter at the position. Christian Bishop played 26 minutes. That's Rodney Terry, right? Eight field goals and three free throw attempts in the second half. Going to him for the game-winning bucket, right? Jerome Tang from Kansas State not being able to adjust. Christian Bishop being the best player on the floor in the second half. That's Rodney Terry. Tyrese Hunter, who's probably your fourth or fifth option at this point, Christian Bishop coming off the bench, scored 24 points in the second half. Kansas State scored 30. That's Rodney Terry, right? Three double-digit comebacks in Big 12 Conference play, including a top-10 win on the road on Saturday. That's Rodney Terry. This team was never phased. They were never – they never wavered, right? in probably the toughest environment they've played in yet outside of Iowa State or Tennessee. You can hear in his halftime speech, the Texas men's basketball Twitter posted it. Somebody in the background was saying, we're not leaving here with a loss. You can see on the screen during the timeouts, Marcus Carr and Tyrese Hunter the whole time, down double digits. We're good. Calm down. We're good. That's Rodney Terry. And oh, by the way, not only has this team rallied around him, but those two five stars that are committed next year in A.J. Johnson and Ron Holland, they're still committed to this Texas men's basketball team, and they're still committed to Rodney Terry. As I've said, Rodney Terry is killing the interview, and he beat Baylor, and he beat Kansas State really without great performances at all from Marcus Carr, right? Christian Bishop was your best player on Saturday. Kudos for Rodney Terry for figuring that out early, going to it the whole second half, and continuing to go to it even for the last play of the game because Kansas State refused to adjust. And now you have a tough matchup tonight against the Kansas Jayhawks, against Bill Self, right? It's a chance for Rodney Terry to put three signature wins on his resume in a row. Against Baylor at home, against Kansas State on the road, and now against the defending national champion Kansas Jayhawks. If this Texas men's basketball team comes out of Lawrence Fieldhouse tonight with a win against Bill Self and this Kansas team, you won't hear the end of it from me. But regardless of what happens tonight, Rodney Terry is killing the interview he deserves big 12 coach of the year consideration he deserves national coach of the year consideration and 
regardless of what happens moving forward, whether they lose or win to Kansas, how many games they win in the Big 12 Conference Tournament, how many games they win in the National Tournament. I'm not saying that Ronnie Terry deserves this job, but based on what he's done in 15 games, he deserves the most consideration. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Long on Source All Things Texas Athletics, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hook them. Peace.